Ever stumbled upon those flashy ads promising to write your nonfiction book in just 30 minutes? Or services that churn out a full manuscript for you to tweak all in under an hour? Tempting, right? But here's the hard truth. If you want to write a nonfiction book that truly resonates, transforms lives, and is recommended by readers everywhere, that quick fix approach just won't cut it. Let's dive into how to write a nonfiction book with real impact, especially in our AI-driven world of 2024. Welcome back to Bite Size Booksmith, where technology empowers creativity. I'm Angie, your guide in the ever-evolving world of AI-assisted writing and authorship. In today's episode, we're tackling a big question. How do you write a nonfiction book in 2024 that's not just another drop in the ocean, but a beacon of knowledge and transformation? In a world where speed is often mistaken for efficiency and quantity overshadows quality, we're going to explore how to use emerging technologies thoughtfully. We'll dive into a process that's not about cutting corners, but about enhancing our creative journey. From identifying your reader's pain points to delivering a manuscript that speaks volumes of your expertise and passion, we're covering it all. So if you've ever dreamed of writing a nonfiction book that leaves a lasting impact, this video is for you. Let's embark on this journey together and discover how to craft a book that truly resonates with your audience and stands the test of time. All right, let's dive into step one, deciding what you want to write about. This step is crucial because it sets the foundation for your entire book. It's not just about picking a topic. It's about understanding your reader deeply and addressing their needs. Start by asking yourself, what is my customer's biggest pain point? You want to write about something that solves a real problem for them, something that they are actively seeking answers to. Unsure of what their biggest pain point is? Ask. Next, think of a quick win you can provide through your book. What valuable insight or solution can you offer early in the book that will immediately benefit your reader? This quick win is key to keeping your reader engaged and invested. And finally, why should they care about your book? What's in it for them? Your book needs to have a clear value proposition. It should offer something unique, insightful, or transformative that resonates with your audience's needs and aspirations. Remember, the goal here is not just to choose a topic you're passionate about, but to find an intersection where your expertise meets your reader's needs. This intersection is where your book will have the most impact. So take your time with this step. Reflect, research, ask questions, and get into the mindset of your reader. The more you understand them, the more powerful and effective your book will be. Now, on to the second step. Before you dive into extensive research, it's important to gauge what you already know about your chosen topic. This not only saves time, but also helps in creating a more authentic and knowledgeable narrative in your book. Start by creating a mind map. This can be a simple paper sketch, or you can use a digital tool like XMind. Your mind map should branch out with everything you know about the topic, from basic concepts to detailed insights. This visual representation will help organize your thoughts and identify areas where you might need more information. Next, review your own published content. If you've written blog posts, articles, or even social media posts related to your topic, go through them. Have you recorded videos on the topic? This content can be a goldmine for your book, providing personal insights and real life examples. Also, don't forget to review content you've purchased from others. Refresh your memory by revisiting courses, books, or other materials you've bought from experts on the topic. They can offer diverse perspectives and additional information you might have overlooked. By the end of this step, you'll have a clearer understanding of your existing knowledge base and a solid foundation to build upon as you move forward with your book. The third step is to dive into Amazon research. This is where you'll get a sense of the existing market for your topic and find gaps that your book can fill. Start by looking at other books on your subject. Pay special attention to their table of contents and the categories they are listed under. This will give you an idea of what topics are already being covered and how you can offer something different or more in-depth. Read reviews to see where these books are falling short and what they're doing right. While you're there, compile a list of categories and keywords relevant to your book. These keywords are crucial for making your book more discoverable on Amazon. They should be specific to your topic and resonate with what your potential readers are searching for. This step is not just about understanding the competition. It's about identifying opportunities to make your book stand out. 
By the end of this research, you should have a pretty good idea of the best categories and keywords for your book, along with a better understanding of how it will fit into the current market landscape. Remember, your goal is to add unique value to the conversation on your topic, and this research is a key part of that process. Now let's move to the fourth step, creating your table of contents talk. This is more than just an outline. It's the blueprint of your book. Begin by deciding what you want to cover in the book. Think about the journey you want to take your readers on. What are the key points and milestones along this journey? This will form the backbone of your talk. Next, consider your unique selling proposition, USP. What makes your book different from others in the same field? Your USP should be reflected in your talk, showing readers at a glance why your book is the one they need. This step is crucial in giving your book structure and flow. A well-thought-out TOC not only guides your writing process, but also helps potential readers understand the value and uniqueness of your book. It's about making a promise to your readers about what they can expect to learn and discover. Your talk is also a great tool for keeping yourself focused and on track during the writing process, especially useful if you're balancing writing with other commitments. But remember, your talk is not set in stone. It's a living part of your book that can evolve as your ideas develop. Having a solid talk from the start will make the entire writing process smoother and more efficient. Moving on to step five, dictation. This is my secret to creating a quality rough draft super quick. Dictating your book can be a game changer, especially if you're juggling a busy schedule. It's about getting your ideas out in a natural conversational tone. Start by talking through each of your chapters as if you're presenting them to your audience. Imagine you're explaining the concepts to a friend or a curious learner. This approach helps in breaking down complex ideas into digestible, engaging content. Use tools like Descript, Otter.ai, or Rev.com for transcription. These tools can convert your spoken words into text, giving you a rough draft to work with. The key here is not to worry about perfection. At this stage, it's all about getting your ideas down. Dictation can speed up the writing process significantly, especially if you have ADHD or get writer's block at the site of a blank page. It's particularly helpful if you find typing cumbersome or if your thoughts flow better when you speak. Plus, it adds a personal touch to your writing, making your book sound more like you. Remember, the rough draft is just the beginning. It's the raw material that you'll refine and polish in the next steps. But by dictating your book, you're laying down the bones of your manuscript, setting the stage for the detailed work to come. After dictating your rough draft, the next vital sixth step is editing your book. This is where your manuscript begins to transform from a collection of ideas into a polished, reader-friendly manuscript. Begin by organizing your content for logical flow and coherence. Look at how each chapter transitions into the next, ensuring your book tells a compelling, unified story. Next, focus on refining the language and style. This isn't just about grammar and spelling. It's about making your message clear, engaging, and relatable. Pay attention to tone, pacing, and voice, ensuring consistency throughout the book. This is also the step in the process where I get AI involved. AI writing assistants like ChatGPT, Jasper.ai, and PseudoWrite can be incredibly helpful in this stage. They can suggest improvements, help rephrase awkward sentences, and even aid in ensuring that your writing is grammatically sound. Now, here's a key piece of advice. Get a human editor or a beta reader involved. While AI tools are fantastic for initial edits, nothing replaces the nuanced understanding and feedback that a skilled editor or an insightful beta reader can provide. They can offer perspectives you might have missed, suggest improvements, and help fine-tune your narrative. This human touch in editing is essential. A good editor or beta reader can help you see your work through your reader's eyes, ensuring your book resonates with your intended audience and achieves its purpose. Remember, editing is an iterative process. Be open to feedback and be prepared to revise. Your book will be all the better for this collaborative effort, standing out for its quality and impact. Now it's time to move on to step seven and write your introduction. This is arguably the most important part of your book. 
It's where you make a promise to your reader, setting the tone for what's to come. Your introduction should hook the reader immediately. Begin with a compelling statement or question that addresses the core theme of your book. Why is this topic important? How will it change the reader's perspective or life? Then delve into what the reader can expect to gain from your book. Make a promise about the transformation or knowledge they will acquire by the end. This is not just about outlining the contents, but about selling the value of your book. Your introduction should also reflect your voice and style. It's your first opportunity to connect with the reader, to establish trust, and to showcase your unique perspective. Remember, the introduction sets the stage for your entire book. It should be engaging, informative, and persuasive. Spend time crafting this section carefully. A strong introduction can make the difference between a reader choosing to continue or putting the book down. Once your manuscript is edited and polished, it's time to continue to step eight, package your book. This involves several key elements that contribute to your book's presentation and marketability. First, create your cover. The cover is often the first thing potential readers will see, so it needs to be eye-catching and reflective of your book's content. Consider hiring a professional designer or using a design tool like Canva to ensure your cover stands out and appeals to your target audience. Next, write your book blurb. This short, compelling description is crucial for capturing a reader's interest. It should highlight the main themes of your book, hint at the transformation or knowledge the reader will gain, and entice them to read more. Also, focus on your front and back matter. This includes elements like the foreword, acknowledgments about the author section, and any calls to action. These parts of the book provide context, build credibility, and can also be used to promote other works or platforms you have. Adding a call to action is especially important, whether it's directing readers to your website, inviting them to join your mailing list, or encouraging them to follow you on social media. A call to action turns your book into a bridge to further engagement with your audience. Remember, packaging your book is not just about making it look good. It's about creating a cohesive product that communicates the value of your content and encourages readers to engage with you and your work beyond the book. Now that your book is written, edited, and packaged, it's time for the final and crucial step nine, selling your book. This is where all your hard work pays off. First, consider the different avenues for selling your book. You have options like Amazon, Barnes, and Noble and other online retailers. Don't overlook the power of selling directly through your website or at local events and speaking engagements. Develop a marketing strategy that aligns with your book's topic and your audience. Don't be afraid to use a launch team. Utilize social media, email newsletters, and other platforms to spread the word about your book. Engaging with writing and reading communities online can also be a great way to promote your work as long as you provide value first. Consider running promotions such as discounted prices for a limited time or bundle deals with your other books or courses. These tactics can help create buzz and encourage initial sales, which can lead to more reviews and word of mouth referrals. Remember, selling your book is not just a one-time effort. It's an ongoing process that involves building relationships with your readers, getting feedback, and continuously promoting your book in relevant circles. Your book is a reflection of your expertise and passion. With the right approach to selling it, you can reach the readers who will benefit most from your work and establish yourself as an authority in your field. As we conclude our journey to writing a transformative nonfiction book in 2024, let's quickly review the steps we've covered. We began by deciding what to write about, focusing on addressing your reader's biggest pain points. Then we determined what we already knew about the topic using tools like mind maps. Our third step involved Amazon research, looking at other books for inspiration and keywords. We created a solid table of contents, reflecting our book's unique selling proposition. Dictating the book was our next step, a method I've used for creating a quick and quality rough draft. We then emphasize the importance of editing, striking a balance between AI assistance and human insight. Writing a compelling introduction was our seventh step, setting the tone and promise of your book. Packaging your book came next, including designing the cover and writing a captivating blurb. Finally, we discussed selling your book and exploring different avenues and marketing strategies. 
If this guide has inspired you to start or refine your nonfiction book writing journey, please hit that like button and subscribe to Bite Size Booksmith. Your engagement supports our channel and fuels our mission to blend cutting edge technology with the art of storytelling. Now, I'm eager to hear from you. Are you planning to write a nonfiction book? What steps from today's video do you find most valuable? And if you've already embarked on this journey, share your experiences and tips in the comments below. Would you like me to cover more content on writing nonfiction? If so, put a yes in the comments. Thank you for joining me. Stay tuned for more insights on using technology to enhance your writing. And remember, with a thoughtful approach and the right tools, your writing can not only inform, but transform. Keep exploring, keep innovating, and I'll see you on our next bite-sized adventure.